Runk. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It's <clears throat> a new day, dude. Congratulations, podcast. Uh, welcome to the new episode of Congratulations. I can't wait for Minneapolis this weekend. I can't wait for Minneapolis on Saturday. Milwaukee Friday, the day before. And then I got to take a month off. I'm taking a month off, I think, uh, until May when I go to uh, Columbus and Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, And I just announced dates in Pueblo, Colorado. Where is it? Colorado Springs, Colorado. Where is it? And Tucson, Arizona. I've uh, been there once. Um, so go to chrislea.com, get tickets. I'll be in Salt Lake, be in a bunch of different places and all that shit. Um, the great thing about today is I'm nauseous as shit. So that's awesome. That's just great. That is just fantastic that I'm so nauseous. It's so fantastic I'm so nauseous, and it's so fantastic that no matter what, for two weeks, my tummy is going to be doing all sorts of things. So that's great. Dude, can't, can't even – I mean, that's just so great. So thank God, dude. It's like winning the lotto, only you um, have to keep going potty, and also you think maybe you might throw up. So that's great, dude. I mean, I'm so happy about that. Um and uh, I got my new sunglasses. They're red, so everybody watch out. Uh, I'm going to be looking a little bit spicy. Uh, and uh, I do have yellow sweats on, so I was walking around today pretty spicy. And I got red sunglasses on and yellow sweats on, walking around pretty spicy, so it's all good. And I was thinking about, man, a lot of people are like, dude, you're 42 or whatever. The f- You know, you're 40. What what are you what are you trying to do with your, the way you dress? And it's like, you know, yeah. And then I actually was in Austin uh, I did my shows, and I'll get to that. They were great. But I was leaving Austin, and I ran into James Marsden, who's like the nicest guy in the world, you know? And he was like, hey, Chris. And I was like, oh, what's up, dude? And we shook hands, and then I walk away, and I was like, how you been? He's like, you live in Austin? I'm like, nah. Uh, I was just doing a show here, and maybe he lives in Austin. I have no idea. But I walked away, and I'm like, man, that's a really, like, there's a, like, he looks good. He's a handsome dude. He's aged well. And, like, he's just dressed well. And I'm like, I dress like I'm in a hoodie and like, and then I'm like, man, I'm 40 something years old. And like, people are like, yo, why you dress like that? And it's like, maybe I just need to start dressing with like button downs and a really nice blazer, you know, and just a really nice blazer with like nice jeans and those shoes that like, you know, they're like kind of, they're not, they're boots, I guess, but like you just slip them on and then they're like. The, the kind that like you you like you, the town is just gentrified and then the, the people are wearing those boots and I'm like man you that's the kind of thing that's the kind of guy that's the kind of guy I want to be like though that's what James Marsden is like he's like the kind of guy you see him and you're like ah maybe I gotta like <laughs> maybe I gotta like buy some sort of like V like like a, or like a crew neck from you know Maybe I should go to like J. Crew. You see, that's the kind of guy I gotta be like, dude. You know? It's like we talk about grow or grow or die. That's what I talk about on that's what I taught on this podcast. And it's like, dude, yeah, but also I just keep flossing with these hoodies. I just keep getting real nice with it. Of course, dude. He keeps adding laces to the shoes because that's what the hype beasts say. And ah, you know, it's not like I've got an over-the-shoulder bag, but dude, I keep the I keep the sweats cuffed. And then when they said go wide at the end, your boy bought ones that were wide at the end. You know, they bunch up real nice over the laces. So it's like, all right. But maybe people see me and they're like, I gotta get more hip. I don't know, dude. But all I'm saying is you see James Marsden in the airport. And you start to doubt your ways because that dude's got a nice smile, dude. And he looks in your eyes. And it's just like, man, I don't know. I'm impressionable. What can I say, babies? I'm impressionable, but aren't we all in a bit? uh, Maybe we're not all. Maybe we're not all impressionable. But my gosh, dude, was I not at. if If I were to tell you I was not at Jones on 3rd in Studio City eating some broccolini and tuna right before I was just unloading 
in the toilet, I'd be someone else because that's what happened to me. If if you picture me an hour and a half ago, just not unloading the Sarlacc pit. You know what I'm talking about? Just absolutely. Well, that's the most disgusting way anyone's ever put it. But I mean, man, it was so bad. And then I was so bad that I almost I thought I was going to start throwing up. Yes, dude. I just was nauseous, man, and I still am. But we fight through it, and we do the podcast, don't we? We fight through it, we do the podcast because I'm here for you. I'm here for you, dude. And a lot of people have been, you know, I've been flirting with maybe ending the podcast or whatever, but not really. But you know what I mean? But I think about it, right? Because it's like, how long is this podcast going to go? And we need to make this log cabin already. And maybe we'll just make the log cabin. And maybe every podcast will be live from now on just in the log cabin, in the tall grass, you know? Because I guarantee if I had a log cabin... And some tall grass, people would move and go there. I know I have enough fans. You know, but it's like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it online, keep it virtual. I'm not sure. I thought that the metaverse was going to be a thing for a while, and it's obviously not going to be a thing yet. Uh, but it could be. It could be coming up soon. But I'm happy you're here with me. And uh, and we're going to keep doing this podcast. Yes, dude. We're going to keep doing this podcast. We can't stop it. Um. They're going to kill people in Uganda if you're gay, huh? That's pretty crazy. They're going to kill people in Uganda if you're gay, you die. And that's insane. How about that? And America's up in arms about that. And then people are like, well, we got enough problems. Don't be so up in arms about another country when we know that China and, you know, Russia are pretty much on their way to just nuking us. But that's, you know, that's neither here nor there when somebody's in Uganda saying stuff like, you know, don't identify. I Look. If, I think if you're gay, be gay, be gay, sh- be honestly, be so gay, like be so gay to where you're just dancing everywhere and just roller skating. But in Uganda, you can't even be like, I'm gay or you get killed. And that is absolutely unreal. The, 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 n- it never stops. You never, the thing, things never stop. You know what I'm talking about? And I know that really be basic, but things absolutely never stop. Like, uh, they they used to kill gays and then then it was celebrated and then everyone you you know thought back when the Grecian people used to literally have sex with m- m- other guys and think it was manly they used to think it was like they're like if you didn't do it they're like you're gay you, you don't you don't fuck guys okay you, are, what are you a woman you know what I mean and like and like then it became out of fashion and then in fashion. And now Uganda is just like, let's start this over all over again. Let's just start killing. And that's just too much. I think everyone should be totally, totally, totally gay. And a matter of fact, if, if you don't fuck any guys as a guy in your whole life, I think you personally, I think you need to be stoned. And here's the deal. I have not done it yet. But I'm only I'm uh you know 42 I'm a, I'm a I'm a spring chicken especially when it comes to gays cuz dude you ever see a really old gay guy that guy's floating I mean that's the most gay guy and that's awesome and I can't wait to be there because if I'm not if I don't if I don't look dude if I don't fuck one guy in my life for real stone like I stone I think I also think it's super gay of Uganda to be like hey we're going to kill you if you're gay because really, that's means they're all secretly gay. If you have a problem with something that has nothing to do with you, you've got some issues in with inside of yourself. Like I used to say this on my first special, I said, if you met your friend and he was always like, "Dude, fuck Butterfingers, huh? Butterfingers are Butterfingers are fucking bullshit." You'd be like, "What happened between him and a Butterfinger?" You had it in your anus. Pretty much, if you've got a problem with someone that has nothing to do with you, it was in your anus. <laughs> You know what I mean? So you got a problem with gays? You had guys in your anus. Um, and anyway, these are the kind of hard-hitting facts that we talk about here at the Congratulations Podcast. But I just think it's a big, uh, I, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a big issue, and we talk about the hard-hitting issues here. Um, I think uh, you know, I want to be in a world where it's just fine to be whatever you want, uh, except for. Pedro Pascal, because he's just in too much shit. 
The Last of Us was it. That's the th- You know what's got to be crazy? When you're a star like that and you just go like this. Oh, this is the year. Like Josh Brolin in 2021 or 2020, I think it was. Or maybe even 19. Yeah, it was 2019. Where he's like, oh, this is my year. I'm in Endgame. I'm in all sorts of shit. You know what I mean? He, I, Like, I'm a model. I wrote a book, whatever he did. I have a cooking show, you know? It's like, uh, oh, dude, this is it. This is your year. And when I have that year for me, I'm fucking so many dudes. I can't wait to see renovations, honestly. Jeremy Renner's coming out with renovations. I'm going to the premiere. He invited me, dude, and it's on. I can't wait to do it. There's a Q&A afterwards. I'm going to meet him, and I can't wait, dude. That song by DMX, ready to meet him. That's about me and Jeremy Renner. Um. So, yeah, Uganda, get it. Come on, dude. Get it together, Uganda. Dude, send me over there. Guys, 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 guys. Listen, I think the problem lies within yourself. <laughs> Um, I didn't even know, by the way, that digital blackface was a thing. I saw this article on CNN. CNN is, I, I fully believe that it's just trolling at this point. CNN, it is so weird that, look, Fox News is, say what you want about, journalism used to be awesome, right? Journalism used to be great, like in the 80s and shit. It used to be a blue collar job that people would have. And they would fight for the common man. None of the journalists had degrees. And then all of a sudden, it became in fashion. Why? Because the movies fucking it up, dude. Movies would come out, and there were like every third movie was about a journalist, just like, yeah, hey, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. And like a cool guy in like a tweed jacket that was like, you know, uh, sarcastic and smarmy would take down the man. And then people wanted to do that. Because rich people saw those movies and were like, I want to be a journalist. So they went to school for it. And now they're in their ivory towers and they don't know shit about what's going on with the common man. They're just like, oh, dude. I want to, you know, I want to talk about these issues that don't matter. And so they're now who's the New York Times for? Who's CNN for? It's for fucking woke women who are 50 years old. That feel good because they feel guilty. They feel guilty so they feel good for fighting for issues about things that don't even really matter. And they're subscribing to the New York Times as a $10 million subscriber base a year. And that's balling for them, dude. And CNN, they've got the... They, so they, they say, oh, you might be... Here's the thing, too. The article about digital blackface. They don't know what the fucking, what to know about digital blackface. What is digital blackface and is it wrong when white people use it? How about how, uh, if you just put white in the, uh, title, people will click it. Digital blackface. Here's the, here's the, here's how the, um, so digital black. So here's what it is. Digital blackface, even though it's nothing, what it is, is. They say when you use a GIF or a meme or a picture online and post it in reaction to something and the picture is of a black person, overly emotional or sassy, then you're doing what's known as you're committing digital blackface. Okay. Now, we all know that that's absolutely nothing because sometimes you just pick a meme and you use it. Now. They were saying if you use the meme where the person's like, ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. And you know what? I could, you could argue that to me. And I could be like, all right, I get how if a white person uses that, they might think it's funny because the black person is being super black and sassy, you know, and uh, what they know to be black and sassy. And so they're perpetuating that, you know, stereotypical. So, Even though already it's a fine line when you say that. Because, like, dude, I'm not thinking about that shit. If I post a meme, which I don't do, but, like, ah, and I wouldn't post that. Ain't nobody got time for that meme or whatever. But 
here's the thing. If you call white people racist about everything, then you're just going to lose allies, right? If, 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 so, so let's go back to that. So if you're talking about that meme, okay, I'll still think it's ridiculous, but fine. But then they went on to say the Tyra Banks one where she's like yelling at someone. I'm like, I don't even know that one. And then I looked it up and it's like, it's just Tyra Banks yelling. They're not using it because she's black. They're using it because she's Tyra Banks. And then they said the Jordan, the Michael Jordan crying meme. And I'm like, okay, you know what? You lost me, dude. Nobody's posting this fucking meme because Michael Jordan's black. They're doing it because it's Michael Jordan and it's Michael Jordan crying. So guess what? You lost an ally. Uh, yes. And here's the deal. If you are pushing me that far, you're losing an ally. And guess what? It's just, it's, it's digital blackface is now nothing. Blackface is something, you know, every now and then you get somebody where they're like, p- p- still, how about the people who are still doing it in ho- on a Halloween? Just fully knowing they're going to lose money and jobs. And they're just like, well, yeah, I mean, but if we're going to dress up as Denzel Washington in Pelican Brief, I mean, how are people going to know we're just going to look like a white guy in a suit? I'll, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll pay. Yeah. I'll put my, I'll, put my, I'll, my, I'll make my face brown and not black, you know, so. Um. But yeah, man, I don't really, uh, I don't know. So I think that CNN is fully in the business of uh, guys like me, because I was talking about this with my brother and he was like, dude, who, who, would, who would agree with this? Like 70%, 17% of people? And I was like, no way, like four. And he was like, no, but that's not a good business model. But I think the business model is just getting clicks because in a sense, when you click on something, you're funding their, their bullshit. You're funding it in a sense. You're seeing the ads, you're seeing the, you know, and they pay for it. And so they pay for the, 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 the shit, the, they pay for the ad space. Right. And I just, uh, I don't think CNN gives a fuck where their clicks are coming from anymore. Right. And I guess I was talking about this with Kristen and they were like, well, that's why Joe Rogan is so big now. And I guess, you know, he's, cause he's very unbiased. It seems, you know, he's just kind of talking to people from both sides of everything. I don't know, dude, whatever. This is honestly, let's talk about pants because it's too much. It's too much. But I was in, how could you believe anything the media says, period? Hey guys, let's take a break. I want to talk to you about Mood. Um, Look, whether you're new to cannabis or an old pro, there is no denying that many of the products on the market seem, at best, honestly, iffy. Uh, And when when you want to relax, iffy, that is not how you want to feel, is it? No, it's not. Uh, Mood puts an end to guessing games. It's 100% federally legal, Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC. You can have shipped straight to you. No doctors, no waiting, just affordable, legal THC. Juan and Ivan say this is the way to shop for weed, which is, uh, you know, they never lie. You shop by mood, like focus, euphoric or creative. Uh, the product is incredible and priced great. They've been enjoying euphoric gummies. Uh, they've been doing, the, they told me the Fruity crispy Treats and the THC Moon Rocks. And they did it easily, dude, okay? Uh, one of them's not the most tech savvy, and he did it, and it got here fast. Mood offers federally legal forms of THC extracted from hemp plants. All of their products are regularly third-party tested in drug enforcement agency registered labs sourced from small family farms and grown organically. However you like to take THC, Mood has you covered. Great for both beginner and veteran users. Yippee. Great tasting gummies, classic flour, convenient pre-rolls, whatever. Yada, yada, so much more. Ready for a good time without the guesswork? Okay, well, order your THC products from Mood today. And for 20% off your first order and free gummies, go to hellomood.com and use promo code Congrats. That's just for our listeners. That's hello, M O O D.com. Promo code congrats for 20% off your order and free gummies. Thanks. Crazy. 
Um, I feel like uh, I went to all. First of all, I did the shows in where was I? Austin Midland. Oh, Midland, dude. Hey, Midland. What are you? Hey, Midland. You got mid in the title. Hey, you're bad. Hey, Midland. You might as well call yourself Okaysville. Hey, Midland. You might as well. What was it between Midland and Ho Hum City? Hey, Midland. You got mid. Hey, try harder. You know, dude. And then they were like, "Well, there's actually a lot of money in Midland." Okay, where? I just saw flat space. I get that there's oil there, but it's like, hey. And I said, there's a lot of money here. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got big people with a lot of money here. Oh, yeah, where do they live? Dallas. Hey, it's not Midland. It's an hour away. Dude, Midland has an $81 million theater that I played, okay? Uh, did I sell it out? No. Why? Because Midland. Uh, was it a great show? Yes, the people were awesome there in Midland. But even they were like, why are we here? And the only reason that night why people were there was because me. And... They made an eighty-one million dollar, but which, by the way, the theater is f to the nines. We love it, and I'll go back. But why was it there? I guess they're trying to make shit popping. But dude, it was literally in the middle of nowhere. I put on my Instagram story. People were like, "Why are you here?" And then I looked at my tour manager, and I was like, "Why am I here?" Then went to Austin, did two shows in Austin. Dude, by the way, my tour manager was like, hey, so we booked Midland and then we got Austin. And I said, great. And he said, here's the thing. And I said, no, no, come back to me before you have to get to the point where you say, so here's the thing. So rewind, get rid of the point in your life where the thing happened to where you now need to come to me and say, so here's the thing. Fix that. And then come up to me and say, good to go. I, that whenever I hear, here's the thing. From my tour manager, I go like this. Okay, well, here we go. I'm bracing for impact, right? So he says, we're doing Midland and then we're doing Austin. We got to fly into Midland. It's co It's connected. Already connecting, I don't want to do it. A connecting flight is basically, it's 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 just, I so don't want to connect on a connecting flight that I would rather almost not do the gig, okay? But I just say yes, because I figure, well, whatever, it's a city, and I don't think about the flights, and then months down the line, we're figuring out what to do with the tour, and I'm like, okay, fuck, I guess we got to do a, a, a connected flight. So we connect to Midland, so great. So then he says, but, and I go, oh boy, here we go. And he says, Austin is an hour flight away, but there's no direct flight. And that's when the B, the blood red meter, just is at the top of my eyes, right? I'm, I'm, blood's, blood's just rising. And I go, and I'm like, so then what the fuck? Why don't we drive? And he says, it's a six-hour drive. Blood all the way up above. All, now it's at the top, right? And I'm surprised because don't route those two cities together. It's so bullshit when two cities are close together and you can play them together, but you can't take a direct flight. And then it's like, well, look into a private jet. And it's like, oh, but it's 20K. And you're like, K, well, cancel everything. I'm going to sleep. So he says, so what do you want to do? And I said, here's what I want to do. I want to drive through the night after my Midland show because I'm not staying in Midland for one extra fucking cocksucking second. So then I'm like, get, this is very important, get the, what do you call it, sprinter van where the shits lay down and we, and we can watch like some fucking dope sh sh like Korean show where we could just binge it all night. To where we're watching the the actors dub, just like, hi, where have you been? Well, I've just been out. <laughs> I had dinner with Megan. And the subtitles are wrong. Brunch. I had brunch with Susan, it says. And you're just like, all right. Well, we'll pick, you know, we got to pick one. But, um, subtitle or voiceover. So, uh. 
He says, okay, I'll do it. I said, but make sure that they bring the right Sprinter van. He says, I put it in the notes. I said, all right, great. So we get done with the Midland show. Now we're supposed to get into the van and drive to Austin. And my tour manager comes up to me and he says, so here's the thing. And I go, no. Rewind your life to where you have to, where, where you got to the point where you're good. We're going to have to say, so here's the thing to me and fix it. I'm not a bad guy. Please work with me here. And he says, they showed up with the wrong Sprinter van. And I say, what do you mean? And he says, they don't have the layback seats. And I go, well, we got to drive through the night. And he says, I know. So they're going to get a different van and they're going to be back in a half an hour. And I say, great. That's a little bit annoying, but it's way better. And they're going to have a TV. Okay. There was no TV in the one that they came with. And I said, great. I said, great. Because I'm Mr. Easy going at this point. Because sometimes problems arise and I understand that. And it's not going to make anything better by getting mad. And a th- half an hour, I could wait a half an hour in this green room. I'm just chilling with Lulu Gonzalez and Denny Love and, you know, Sam, my, my videographer, and fucking Enrique. We're having a good time, dude. 30 minutes pass and he comes back and he says, so here's the thing. And I say, no. This is the third time you say, so here's the thing. About this moment. To me, no. And he says, it'll be a few more hours if you want that van or we could just take this van. And I say, I've dealt with all I can at this point. He says, but the good thing is you're not going to pay for it. And I say, oh, well, that is a good thing because it's about, you know, it's thousands of dollars to get this van and take the ride. So now I don't have to pay for it. Okay. But let's get in the van and go to Austin and it's going to take six hours and it's 1230 already at this point. And we got to stop at Whataburger, you know, because it's going to be there and I'm a fucking piggy. And I'm going to have to eat two burgers because one burger is a snack and <laughs> it doesn't calm my appetite. Dude, so we get in the thing. Dude, the seats, not only do they go back, I think they're a little bit forward. I'm like this. And they're so bad. And... We stop at Whataburger. Now, I don't have to pay for the ride, so I'm a little bit happy for it. But also, I'd rather just pay the shit and have the lay down shits and watch a Korean drama. No TV. No, 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 you know. My videographer's on the floor. We're going to crash. He's just going to lose all of his body parts. So we get to the uh, Whataburger. And they're like, have you ever had Whataburger? And I say, yeah, but I don't remember. And they say, dude, top five. Lulu Gonzalez says, it's in my top five burgers. And I say, really? I don't remember that. And she says, it is. Because in and outs trash. And I go like this. You lost me. in and out to me, the best burger, staying power, out the wazoo. And then people are like, yeah, but the fries suck. Dude, if you're going to a burger place because of the fries, your priorities are all mismatched. Yes! I fucking think of the good things. So I'm just like, all right, let's get a water burger. What do we get? Now, my tummy has been on fire and gurgling and making my anus open up like a sarlacc pit for about two weeks now. So this burger situation, I got to be real careful. But then I noticed they've got a jalapeno burger. So I go like this without thinking. One, please. But then I also don't want to get the thing that isn't the regular thing at Whataburger because I want the regular thing at Whataburger so I know where to rank it in my burgers. Of course. Yes, I think about the right thing. So I also get a double cheeseburger because that's regular, my baby. So I say one jalapeno burger you know, sayonara to this tummy, and then also a regular one because I just want to try both. Now, they showed up. I ate fucking both of them. All of them? Yes. Did I leave one bite left over on either of them? No. Dude. So I ate the two Whataburgers, and honestly, dude, I got to tell you, they're, o- they're good, and that's it. And I said, the fact that this is in the top five is absolutely bonkers. I can name so many burgers better than Whataburger. So the people from Texas that love Whataburger and the people from the South that are like, Whataburger is the shit. I know what you're doing, dude. I absolutely know what you're doing. You just try to be in the game. You're trying to have an interesting opinion because Whataburger, you want it to be the dark horse. But let me tell you something, dude. It's not the dark horse. It's fine. And then I ate a dude. Denny Love agreed with me. He was like, this is kind of okay. It's mid. It was mid, and I don't even say that. And I've been to Midland. And uh, so we leave. We go back to to Austin. We get there at 6.30 a.m. Now, we have been up because here's the thing, too. Because we went to – we were going to fly in the day before on Midland. Look at that fucking – look at that, dude. My tricep isn't even – it's not even flat. I mean, it's a little flat, but it, that's muscle. But, dude, so we, we were going to fly into Midland the day before because I do that. I like to get my rest, right? I used to go the day of. 
But now I'm like 42 and I'm like, dude, I don't want to be tired. So I used to fly the day, I used to fly the day up, but now I fly the day before to get my rest. But then what I did was instead of that, because the flight was going to be delayed and we weren't going to make it, we were going to maybe not make our connection. I was like, fuck it. Let's just go tomorrow morning. So we flew the day of to Midland. So we got, we had to leave. We had to get picked up at 4 a.m. So we got up at 3.30, right? So, which means we didn't, you know, I go to bed, you know, I'm a fucking con. I go to bed at one. So I got, we all had two hours of sleep. Me, David Sullivan, and Sam, the videographer, who my son calls him Sam the guy because we have Sam the dog. And now he calls him Sam the dog. And I, he was calling him Sam the guy the whole time. I was like, wait, come Sam the die. guy. And he says, because we have Sam the dog. And I was like, oh, my heart melted. So anyway, we got on the plane, had no sleep, got on the van, uh, the sprinter, no sleep on the sprinter. I got maybe an hour or two. David Sullivan sat up like this the whole time. I can't sleep, man, because I'm sharing the seat with Enrique. Ting. And so we get to San Antonio at night. Fuck yeah, this is so interesting. And we get there at 7 a.m. And David Sullivan, dude, I wake up at 1 p.m. And I see texts from David Sullivan at the golf course. He was there at fucking 9, dude. He was there at 9 a.m. with a bright orange shitty golf shirt and shorts that were too baggy, dude. I, I, and I'm like, here I am. Like, why do you even have that? Sh like, did you pack that shirt, bro? Did you know you were going to be doing this shit? He had a total of two hours of sleep for two whole days. Three days, actually. Two nights. So I'm like, bro, you're going to die. There comes a moment where you're not, you don't even just, you don't even sleep. You just like, you're so tired that you don't fall asleep. You pass away, right? That's going to be David. David's going to be like this. Like not, he's going to be like, man, I'm tired. Just, and so, so he's so tired. And then. You know, I'm shitting at Whataburger, and he's fucking shitting at Whataburger, and he won't go to sleep. And so we did the show, and then he helped fucking run the cameras for the show. And then afterwards, dude, it was 3 a.m., and we were eating Velvet Taco, which is banging. Dude, now I know why I'm at. Look at all that. Listen to all the shit I eat. Look at, this is why the fucking tummy is so... Uh, April, when I have a month off, dude, I'm going to be eating salads and fucking walking uphill with lunges, dude. It's going to be insane, man. I'm going to look so good. Come fucking May in Cincinnati... When I'm in Cincinnati, come May in Cincinnati, when I come to Cincinnati, dude, I'm going to look so good. Jason Momoa is going to be like, oh, shit. I've decided something. I'm going to do movies again. I'm going to do movies again, and I'm going to do TV again, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. I'm going to fucking be on the shit, and I'm going to be acting so good, and you're going to be blown away. Uh, blown away, dude. Blown away. I'm going to play a guy who stutters. I'm going to play a Korean guy, no makeup. I'm going to be playing. I'm gonna, you think I'm not going to play a twink? I'm going to play a twink, dude. And I'm going to guess what I'm going to do? No research. And I'm just going to come in, blow the doors off, not get nominated for shit because of we know the woke environment. But you're going to know secretly that your boy needs to be nominated. And I'm being dead. Dude, I'm going to play a woman, a woman, not a trans woman, a woman. I know trans women are women, but a woman from just like, you know what I'm talking about? Like Ben Shapiro would be like, that's a woman. That's a woman like that. That kind of woman. That's what I'm going to play, dude. Trans women or women or whatever, you know? I don't know, dude. I don't care. I don't know. Like some people are like, yeah, but don't stay silent or it's perpetuating the... Nah, dude, guess what? Zip, that's it. Unzip, because I got to do the podcast. But zip, dude. Like I'm not... I don't I don't care about all the issues. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Oh, but that's your privilege, okay? How about that, dude? And you know what people are doing right now? They're listening to me. They're going like this. Fuck yeah, you're right, dude. I want to... I, I feel that way. But you can't say it because you got a regular job. But I can because I'm on Patreon. And I can because I do stand-up. And, dude, you know what, man? It's great. I can't wait to do this special and have it come out, man. This shit is fucking bonkers. What if I was the kind of comedian that was like, dude, we're going to change the game with this special? <laughs> hey, guys, now that my shit's out, the game's changed, dude. We had to change. They're trying to silence us. Dude, they can't. I love that shit. Like, like, that's so funny when people just have, like, a fucking inflated self-importance. Dude, whatever. I'm fucking so important. I'm going to run for fucking governor. Previously on The Governor, starring Chris D'Elia. That's going to be me on ABC, dude, when I come back.
and just fucking acting as a woman governor, not somebody who's trans. Ben Shapiro is going to be like, oh, it's Chris D'Elia? I thought it was a woman. He's really good. Previously on The Governor. Hey, guys, you really need to pass that bill. Previously on The Governor. I love you, but it's different because, God, there's so many judges. Previously on The Governor. No, I know, but God, move away. Move, lobbyists. I'm trying to get to my meeting. Wow, no, nothing about... (laughs) Dude, move out of the way, lobbyists. Oh, dude, nobody grows up and says, one day I'm going to be a lobbyist. It's never happened. It's happened more where people say, when I grow up, I'm going to be a crack whore. Previously on Crack Whore, starring Chris D'Elia. Really? No, you have, to use, you have to use one. I'm scared of ST. Previously on Crack Whore, starring Chris D'Elia. It's $25. Previously on Crack Whore, starring Chris D'Elia. I'll do it for 12 Okay, um... Previously on Crack Horse, starring Chris D'Elia. Freeze! Oh, no, not again. At least I'm not a lobbyist. Um. Yeah, dude. Somebody wrote me and they were like, I can't believe you did a post about digital blackface. Uh, I I really fuck with you for a while now, but, you know... You said some things that really irked me about my community. I, I don't even know if it was a black person. I suppose it was. And they were like, um, you know, you're saying things that really irk me. How could you do this when my community is in shambles? And I'm just like, I just read it and I go like this. Uh, but also, everything's in shambles, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I got no idea. Um, I actually, uh, I'm good, dude. I want to get yatted. Man, I am mean, I am fighting nausea the whole time here. So that's cool. I, uh, I'm going to try and not do it. You know what? I, I pat me myself on the back for dude. I did fucking shows this weekend. I had two in one day. I didn't lose my voice. Yeah. So that means I think my voice will be okay for shooting my special, um, on Saturday in Minneapolis. Uh, what was I going to say about the fucking, uh, sit with me, but sit with me guys, sit with me for a second. Cause I can't, I can't remember what the hell I was going to say. And it was going to be absolutely great. It was going to blow the doors. I was going to change a podcast game. Um, too many people have podcasts, huh? I saw a podcast the other day and guys were just, you know what they were doing? They're just talking. And it's like, dude, don't have that. I feel like oh, I have to go to the. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm back, man. I'm just relaxing, bro. I'm just relaxing. I had to go potty. I can't help it. I, 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 I'm. It's like, oh, 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 oh. This, this clip, dude, is so funny to me. This guy is the most of the shit guy of all time. Okay. Where you working, so bro? You got plenty, of cash. Plenty. Mm-hmm. Finna yeah. put you on, my boy. I got somebody for y'all. You know what I'm saying, bro? I mean, so his you- hair is a hat, you know. With a brim. Yeah, do hey, you ran into like, bro? What's your type? You like black, white? I like white girls more better. Okay. Uh, yeah. So could not. I like white girls more better. Especially oh, in the thick time. That's what I'm talking about. Snow bunny. Yeah, uh-huh. In other words, pog. Pog. That's what I like. Yeah. Why is he being a politician about it? In other words, pog. Say that bit again. Say it one more time. I'll say it slow. Pog. P A W G. Badass white girls. 
Nigga, don't talk about it. you like, oh, the way he leans yeah. back. I like fat ass white girls, the thick time. Ooh, the yeah. types. Yeah. Those are my favorite. Okay. Yeah, Robot. Yeah, about. Okay. Those are my favorite. She's bald. Fat ass white girl. Fat ass white girl. Shit, I got, but I know what I'm talking about. The, the snow bunnies. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like the snow bunnies. rabbits. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you're acting so What's cool. What's your name dude. again, bro, before we go, bro? Because we got to go, best part man. I ain't going to lie to you. We ain't going to hold you up, bro. We're going to hold What's... you up like the guy's got shit to do, dude. That's so funny. Dude, they're so trolling him. Does he know? This guy is so a guy I would be friends with in high school in New Jersey. I can't even believe it, dude. I would. I... What's your name you? My name. Right here. Joshua Henderson. Oh, the shit. All right, bro. All right, bro. We're going to holler. forget that. Taking it. May my name be the last thing you ever hear. Uh, yeah. I'm getting a little bit out of word, bro. All right, bro. All right, you take All it right. easy. What's his mouth doing, dude? In the middle of the guy's talking, he's just like, may that be the last name that you ever hear. Just so insane. Dude, so insecure. Broski. Hey, you good luck to you. Don't forget about it. Ever. Good luck to you. I gotta, gotta, gotta go back to that part. Dude, that's my favorite part. I mean, that is so funny to me. Hold on. Come on. Okay. Here we go. Oh, like the snow boys. rabbit. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Other shit. So What's your name about. again, bro, before we go, bro? Because we got to go, man. I ain't going to lie yeah, to yeah. you. We ain't going to hold you up, I ain't going to lie to you. What's your name, you? My name, Joshua Henderson. Oh. All right, bro. Oh, since right, you're bro. swallowing so much. We're going to forget that. May right. my name be the last thing oh, you ever hear. Singing. Right. Right. Voice shaking. That's a word, bro. All right, bro. All right, you all take right. it easy now, bro. Dude. Hey, good luck to you. Don't forget about it, ever. Why is he like Barack Obama a little bit? And you bitches don't forget about it, ever. Um, dude, that guy is so dope. God, I would be that guy's friend so hard. You can tell he's got the worst breath of all time. Um, I mean, there's no question that that boy or man, whatever he is, ha has the worst breath of all time. And it's okay. But Joshua Henderson is fucking, oh, oh, his profile. He is so dope. I mean, the fucking picture in the thing. What is it, a regular video of his like? Okay, he's just dancing. All right. Well, this guy's getting... Oh, here we go. Well, it's not just pogs I like, Kay. I like huge chungas, too. As a member... Okay, huge chungas, um... You know? What is this guy saying here? What's up, y'all? Oh. I wanted to ask y'all something. Oh. Do y'all think I'm light-skinned or not? I mean, wow. Is he light skinned? Um, fat ass white girls. I love that guy. Who's saucier, him or the Pope? Is that is that that's not a real jacket that he wore, right? That's the AI shit, dude. AI looks so real. It's I, I can't like the Pope image. He looks so flossing, dude. Uh, why didn't he do that? AI Pope, dude. You can't tell it's not. It's so this is AI. He didn't really wear this jacket. Oh, dude. How do they do this? How do I do that? I want to make AI stuff. I can do it? Really? You can always tell because of the hands, though, right? Let's see. The Pope is absolutely. Oh, even the hand—they got the hands okay with this one. No, not really. Um, yeah, the Pope is—he uh, should dress like that, dude. If the Pope really dressed like that in the AI shit, then more people would fought, would be religious, and it and it would be like people would like it. <clears throat> like cool motherfuckers would be religious. They need a good PR too. Uh, man, I've been watching this ch chat this. GPT or no, sorry, the 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 TikTok thing about the uh, should it be banned or not, dude? It is so hilarious how the government is like. Oh, and what about scrolling? You're just gonna let scrolling happen? And the guy's like, "Excuse me, can I?" No, okay, I'm not done. They're not even letting him talk. The guy just is so obviously a good guy. You can just tell. I don't give a fuck. Should TikTok be banned? No. Here's the thing: we got way worse shit in the world happening. That's that we need to worry about than fucking TikTok. I don't give a shit. Have all my information. I didn't fucking. I don't care, dude. You know. This guy's so the the TikTok shit, dude. About how they. Where's the. The TikTok. Oh wait, what? 
the TikTok shit where the there's all that's ever come up. Why TikTok should just push this? So here we go. It's right here. Oh wait, it was just right there. For me. Here we go. Content moderation, algorithmic discrimination, and safety are neither new nor unique to TikTok. For example, I was disturbed by reports that TikTok content model. No, she's actually being good about it. Again, we do not collect body, face, or voice data to identify our users. Look. I find that hard to believe. It's our understanding that they're looking at the eyes. How do you determine what age they are then? Um, we rely on age gating as our key age assurance. Age gating, which is when you ask the user what age they are. We have also developed some tools where we look at their public profile. Um, to go through the videos that they post to see whether Boy, that's creepy. Tell me. Oh. Well, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. More about that. I mean, so creepy. Has his dick in his hand. Well, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. Hold on a second. All right, I'm ready. It's public, so if you post oh, the slam them, slam them to infinity, them. dude. Slam them to infinity, right there. Through the videos that they post right here. to see whether Boy, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. It's public, so if uh, you post a video, that's you choose that video to go public. That's how you get people to see your video. We look at those to see if you it matches up the age that you talked about. Slam so, them to infinity. I've never seen a harder slam than that. Well, it's public. Well, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. Well, it's public. This is a real challenge for our industry because privacy versus age being so respectful is a really big problem. Being so respectful. Look, look, you keep talking about the industry. We're talking about TikTok. You keep talking about the industry. We're talking about TikTok here. We're talking about children dying. Do you know how many children have died because of this? Do you have any idea? Can you tell? Watch this part. Uh, uh, Congressman, again, it's heartbreaking. Can you tell me if how many children in America have died because of challenges like this? The majority of pe people who use our platform use it for positive experiences. There I, are, I, that's not what I ask you. I some... ask you, tell me the number of children, of U.S. children who have died because of these challenges. Dude, just be like this. Two? I don't know. Why does it? Why don't they just do that? Cause the problem is he's being too much of a respectful adult, dude. They're really coming for that ass. <clears throat> I don't know how many people. <clears throat> how many people, because say something else. How many people die because of whatever, blank, and then the Congress, you know, they're back on their heels. Again... The majority of majority of people who come on our platform get a good I'm not experience. talking about the majority of children. I want to know a number. Dangerous changes are Look not it up. allowed on our platform. If we find them, we will remove them. We take this very seriously. Obviously, you found one today and you removed it. We had to bring it to your attention, and I know I'm out of time. Thank you for being here. Welcome again to the most bipartisan committee in Congress. Hey. Welcome to my, I'm out of time and welcome to the time. Welcome to my bot so like a days ago. Well, you know, it's all good, but I got, you know, he didn't tell me about the, the how many people died. <clears throat> he should have been like, How many people how many people has the US government killed? Oh my god, could you imagine? <laughs> they would have literally just shot him right there. Well, I didn't like that answer, man. I still wanted to hear about, you know, the creepy thing. I got my cock out. Well, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. That's a great sound. Why is that not a sound on TikTok? Well, that's creepy. Why don't you tell me more about that? People like creepy stuff, you know? Why is that why is that a turn on? Why don't people like why do people like uh secret stuff? Why do it uh you know? Don't tell anyone. Well, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. <clears throat> well, it's public. Just slam them to a fucking. The guy's spinning out another in a different world. What's with the dude? If I see Gwyneth Paltrow, what is Gwyneth Paltrow on trial for? Being too white? I don't understand. Every time I look at it, it's like, well, I was skiing and he bumped into me. And then and then she's like, it's so white woman to be like, and it was sexual assault. Like what? What was happening? What was happening? Gwyneth Paltrow, what What did you do? What, what? Somebody's like, I can't taste anymore. This is the whitest shit. It's so white. 
I was skiing. He bumped into me. I'm going to say it's sexual assault. And now he can't taste anymore. Those are the things that I know about the case. That's too white. They say Oscar's too white. Gwyneth Paltrow, case too white. And she's got the nerve to dress like Jeffrey Dahmer with the sunglasses or whatever. Everything is so Gwyneth Paltrow. Here we go. Ski video? There's a ski video? Oh, did something happen? Oh, she crashed into someone? And then a guy suing her. Sanderson's original complaint fought against Paltrow claims that Paltrow allegedly skied out of control and hit the back of Terry Sanderson, another skier who was downhill knocking him it was downhill knocking him down hard, knocking him out, and causing a brain injury, four broken ribs and other. I mean, Jesus, you know? Who's at fault here? In other words, don't scare the person. Okay, this is, I mean, the whitest shit of all time. We will try to get through you quickly. We're at the end of the day. Oh, it's live right now? Gonna, no uh, way, dude. No way. Who would watch this? Dude, I wouldn't even watch a Johnny Je Depp thing. Fucking Kristen was glued to that shit. Fucking so white. Oh, come on, turn on, please. It's so hot in here. Hot in. Um, 69 got hospitalized uh, from getting jumped. Uh, that here's the thing about 69 getting uh jumped why did it happen so late it happened so late i love too that like he denied uh government protection and it didn't happen till that happened in the bathroom of a 24 hour fitness why the fuck is 69 working out like just be gross you know what i mean what is 69 doing at the gym Imagine him on the treadmill with like big jeans and just his hair flopping all over, just sweating so gross. Stop, like, don't, what, bro, rappers working out is fucking hilarious. Aren't they too cool? I thought gangsters don't dance. We boogie. How are you going to work out? You live weights though, maybe. But 6 9 went to the bathroom of the 24-hour uh, the fitness, got jumped by some, you know, I don't know, probably Mexicans, and fucking smashed him up, and he had to be hospitalized because snitches get stitches. Why did it take so long? We don't know. But he denied government uh, protection. Also, I would have loved to... Dude, if I was 6'9", I would have straight up gone into hiding, like, with government, like, uh, protection program. I would have gone to Alaska, hid... Still been me. I would have like cut my hair a little bit and then still kept rapping and then become another name. I would I would have become another I was still I would have made it again and I would just call myself 70. Takashi 70. Like fuck it. Take all the stuff and they like and then I just think it's amazing that it took this long. How how amazing would it have been if just white guys just beat the shit out of them? Snitches get stitches, you know. That's it for the episode on YouTube. If you want to get the raw, the uncut, the unedited episode, go on over to uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash Crystalia, and have at it. It's $6, and you get all of the backloaded episode, backlogged episodes of, uh, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, there's like 25 of them at this point. So go get it. Just six bucks, and you get all that content. Thanks very much. Thank you.